Hey everyone, it's Tim Derling with another edition of Tim's Vinyl Confessions. Thank you again for tuning in. On this one, I'm, it's going to be a brief one. It's a cassette episode. I love doing cassette episodes. This one is on my Ace Fraley collection. Now, there's not a lot of Ace Fraley on cassette, unless I'm missing something and or I'm not aware of something. Um, if you're an Ace fan, you'll know that uh, back in 2016, he did Origins Volume 1, his covers album was quite good. I did a review episode on that. Apparently there's going to be an Origins Volume 2, which is really cool. So we'll get to that. I'll start off with something that technically I tend to consider part of the KISS catalog, and I still do, but I think it's important to talk about, is Ace's 1978 solo album. Of course, all the KISS uh, members did solo albums in 78, and uh, Ace's was probably the most successful. It definitely was the only one that had a hit single, with Russ Ballard's song, New York Groove. And uh, that became a KISS standard in concert, with Ace anyway. So that was the kind of the beginning of his solo career, but it was a long time before it really got going. Of course, he left KISS in 82 and started gigging around the New York area, my understanding anyway. Uh, signed a deal with Megaforce Records, which was distributed by Atlantic at that time, and formed a band called Fraley's Comet. Well, he had a band called Fraley's Comet, but it was the first time that they uh, got a record deal and did an album. This is the first Fraley's Comet album. This is a Canadian cassette. It's actually a Columbia House cassette. Now, the artist is listed as Ace Fraley. They didn't want to go with Fraley's Comet, the label that is. They wanted the name recognition of Ace Fraley right off the bat. This album almost went gold. Uh, it's quite good. I mean, Ace split the vocals on this with Todd Howarth. I'm not the biggest fan of Todd Howarth's vocals. He's a capable vocalist. I, just don't care for his particular style, just my opinion. Not that Ace is a great singer, but um, I, th I do think it sounds better that Ace mixes up his vocals with other vocalists. I just kind of, um, I don't know. I don't know who I would have preferred to have in, in uh, Fraley's Combat. Nothing against Todd, but um, so here it is. Rock Soldiers was an anthem off this one. Also, Into the Night, another Russ Ballard tune, a fine tune that I think Ace plays uh, quite well and sings quite well. Another Kiss Connection, this was produced by Eddie Kramer, who, of course, worked with the band on the Alive albums, Rock and Roll Over, Love Gun, and a uh, picture of the band, some credits, and all the lyrics. I, I, I also want to show you something that I'm, I'm amused by. It just kind of passed by me when I was a kid. A lot of the uh, Warner-affiliated labels did this with their cassettes for a time in Canada. It's not just a cassette. It's a super cassette. You can see that there with the big C? It's a super cassette. What do you think about it? It's super. Never mind. Uh, the next thing to come out was the first thing to come out as Fraley's Comet. And for a while you could find this quite cheap in Markdown bins. Very hard to find on CD. But this is a, a live EP called Live Plus One. And it's very self-explanatory. Live Plus One is four live tracks plus one new studio track. This is also on Megaforce Atlantic, and this particular version is a U.S. Columbia House version. This one's very cool because it dips into the Kiss catalog somewhat. He does Rip It Out, the first song from his 1978 solo album. Uh, he also does Rocket Ride, which is uh, one of the new studio tracks that was on Kiss Alive 2. And Breakout appears on here, which is a song, uh, Kiss fans know this, but it's a song he co-wrote with the late Eric Carr, and it later appeared on the Revenge album, instrumentally featuring a drum solo called Car Jam 1981. So it was recorded around the time of The Elder. There's some credits in here too. I like this one actually quite a bit. It's, it's a short little thing, but it's pretty much all good. Uh, the next album, the only studio album to come out under the Fraley's Comet name, came out in 1988, called Second Sighting. Now, um, this is a Canadian edition on Megaforce Atlantic. And I have to be honest with you, I really don't like this album. Uh, I can't honestly say there's one song on here that I would rate as more than just okay. Uh, maybe Insane is okay. Um, yeah, I just, uh, I just don't think they had good songs for this one. And Ace, uh, if you believe what Eddie Trunk tells us, Ace was hardly on some of these songs, which is um, kind of a wasted opportunity. It probably led to you know losing the record deal a little prematurely. However, um, Atlantic kept him for one more album. By this time, he went back to just using his own name. No more Fraley's Comet, even though it really still was. So this came out in 89, Ace Fraley, Trouble Walkin', 
which is quite a good album. This is a Canadian edition, uh, Columbia House edition, you can see by the CRC written there. Now this album has some curiosities on it for a number of reasons. Let's get the Kiss connections out of the way. As most Kiss fans know, he recorded the song Hide Your Heart on this album, which is a Paul Stanley song, or one of the co-writers on it. A lot of people recorded Hide Your Heart. Uh, Bonnie Tyler did it. Molly Hatchett did it. Uh, and right around the time The Trouble Walking came out, Kiss released Hot in the Shade with the lead single, Hide Your Heart. It's, an, it's a very odd occurrence. And oddly enough, when Ace was in the band again, they never did Hide Your Heart. I, I thought it would have been a, a no-brainer, but it didn't happen. And another uh, Kiss connection is the fact that Peter Criss, who'd kind of been out of the scene for a while, appears on the song Too Young to Die. And uh, some longtime Kiss fans, who were really big this year, appear on this album as well. And I'm talking about uh, some of the guys from Skid Row, um, Sebastian Bach, Snake Sabo, and Rachel Bolin. So this is quite a good album. He had a, the single off of this one. Sometimes Ace picks really good covers to do. He does ELO's Do Ya, which I really think is perfect for him. It sounds like him. Um, it's not that different from the original. It, didn't, it wasn't a hit or anything. I just thought it was quite good. Now the only other thing I have on cassette by Ace Frehley uh, doesn't feature Ace. So in um, 1996, 97, 98, there were a lot of tribute albums that started to come out for various artists and a lot of them featured the same well of talent appearing on them all. And one of the better ones came out in 1996 called Spacewalk. It's a tribute to Ace Frehley. Of course 1996 the original band got back together so there was renewed interest. I kind of like the, the way they did that spacewalk's almost written like Star Trek. I've had this on CD for years. A few years ago I found this unopened cassette at Spin It in Moncton. And I'm not opening it. I mean this features um, Sebastian Bach, Jeff Watson from Night Ranger, Gilby Clark's on here, Scotty and a bunch of the Anthrax guys. It's, um, it's pretty good. And it's uh, collections of songs that Ace is known for with Kiss and also songs from his solo catalog. So I don't think he's ever put any of his newer albums out on cassette that I know of. Those would be cool. You know, Origins Volume 1 or Spaceman or any of those. But that is my Ace Freely cassette collection. Uh, there's another Kiss-related episode that's going to be coming up very, very shortly. Thanks for watching Tim's Final Confessions.